Alison, thank you. First of all, thank you so much for joining us. It's been great to have you as part of this event. Pleasure. Um, sort of looking back and speaking to the other panellists, it's been all about particularly women and sports journalism, the journeys, the challenges, all that kind of stuff. So first off, maybe let's start at the beginning. Maybe tell everyone how you got into sports journalism and broadcasting. So it's a bit of a long story. I'll try and keep it as short as I can. But I went in, in a quite different, uh, different angle to most people. I was passionate about television, making television. So I went into a news channel as a runner, a broadcast assistant, the lowest rung of the ladder, basically, and worked my way up. So, and I tried everything. I did editing. I did a bit of camera work. I ran the news desk for a bit. I did script writing. I even rolled autocue. And at the point that I was rolling the autocue, I kind of thought, I quite fancy the presenting side of things. At the time, they didn't think that my face was right. They didn't think my voice was right. But I was quite persistent about it. So I kind of worked with that. But I always kept my, I kind of, I've always kept myself in the production as well, so that I'd have something to fall back on. Um, so I applied for every single type of job. I did shopping TV, I did movie premieres, I did music, stuff, everything. But eventually I landed a role uh, for Real Madrid TV, which basically combined my production experience and my presenting, so that's how I got that job. And then from then, I basically fell into football and that was it and so ever since uh, working for Real Madrid TV working for Chelsea TV and all the other channels I've worked for all came from that one experience and setting up Real Madrid TV. Wow that's, that's pretty amazing and from what you said before about kind of it sounded like it was a bit of a roller coaster ups and downs what were uh, as well as I guess the ones you've already mentioned what were the other challenges maybe that you faced as a, as a female journalist going into the industry? So I think if you're a journalist, you're part of a press pack, so you're all together. But if you're a broadcast journalist, you're, you're kind of on your own because you're working for the channel you're working with and everyone else that's working with you is back at base. So it is a bit of a lonely place. So if you're on a press conference, you're asking that question on your own because the broadcast journalists, they, they have a, a different way of asking questions because they're not on camera. Uh, sorry, sorry, the written journalists, I should say, they ask it in a different style, a more casual style. So I do think it can be quite lonely sometimes, particularly as a girl. I think sometimes you try and fit in and not be kind of the, the way that you really are I mean it's taken me I guess 20 years in the industry to kind of finally be myself the other big challenge that I didn't actually have a chance to speak about this evening is being a, a mum actually in this industry which is really hard something I didn't think about because obviously you're leaving young kids behind to go six weeks to a World Cup um, you know in the early years I was trying to breastfeed in toilets at football grounds and all kinds of crazy things um, and so it's, it's definitely it's had its challenges as a woman, but I'm so pleased I've stuck at it. That's, ama no, that's amazing and really inspiring. So, all right, well, that brings me on to my next question then. What advice maybe would you give to other female or aspiring journalists, female aspiring journalists that are looking to get into the industry, either as a journalist or as a broadcaster? So the biggest thing I would say is be prepared to work very unsociable hours, work really hard, and unfortunately work for very little pay, which I know not everyone can do. And I'm not saying that you have to have rich family or backing, because basically you can have a full-time job and then you can work on your passion on the side. And the other thing is contacts. Um, and the other thing I think is actually just being someone who um, is willing to take on the, the shifts that no one else will. So whether it's a late shift, whether it's like covering something that no one else wants to, um, and just be nice to work with, just be the person that everyone wants to have around basically that would be my biggest piece of advice and contact i think that's some definitely some sage advice all right well look last question won't take you uh, won't keep you too much longer this event was put on in partnership between the fwa and snack media there aren't that many of these events on um so how important do you think it is for an event like this and what would you say maybe to, to the fwa and snack media for putting this on First of all, I want to, uh, want to thank Snack Media and FWA for putting on this event because there aren't many of them, as you say. Um, I think in England, we're not particularly good at networking and I work for ESPN, an American company, and they are fantastic at networking. And every time I go to events, you know, people are so good at putting themselves out there. And one thing I would say to people is always take opportunities of networking because every single person you meet at one of these events, one day in your career, they will help you. Um, so it's brilliant to, to have them put this on. And I would also like to thank them for putting it on as an all-female panel. And not token females, all females that have like worked their way up, they've grafted. And I was really interested myself to learn how everyone else has gone into the, got into the industry because everyone came into it quite differently. So I've really enjoyed it as well. Brilliant. Well, listen, thank you so much. And it's been an absolute pleasure having you with us this evening. Thank you very much.